Nineteen, Unit Three B, Cognition and Human Performance. In this class, our goal is to one, describe the processes and structures of memory. Two, describe the cognitive constructs for mental representation, including schemata and scripts. We talked about perception and attention. In the next few slides, we are going to discuss the subject of memory, which will then segue into a discussion about knowledge. Each of these topics is constituted by very large bodies of research. It is important to keep in mind that our goal here is to introduce the topic so that it can inform our thinking about usability and the design process. It is common to think about memory as consisting of three subsystems: short-term sensory storage, working memory, and long-term memory. Sensory storage can be captured by thinking of the very brief persistence of an image in your visual system after the object is no longer in view. The same can be said for any of the senses. We will be talking about working memory and long-term memory in a minute or so. It is useful to think about three kinds of memory processes, including encoding, which involves the process of perceiving, processing, and transferring the memory to more or less permanent storage. The form of information or knowledge is stored in long-term memory, and we will talk more about that in a moment. Retrieval refers to the process of accessing information from memory. If you are a designer, how can you create conditions such that the user can retrieve the information they may need to perform a particular task? Working memory is the short-term memory or temporary store that keeps information active. You can keep it active by simple rehearsal, like a phone number to a pizza parlor that you are about to call, or you can process the information more deeply. All information in working memory has an expiration date or expiration minute. It does not persist for very long. Once you've turned your attention to another matter, the prior contents of working memory quickly disappear. I am sure you have all heard about the famous seven plus or minus two chunks of information as the capacity of working memory. It is a useful fact to consider in a design process. However, it has been misinterpreted by some members of the design community. For example. Some have taken it to mean that a menu can be no longer than seven items. Why is that a myth? The answer is that you don't have to keep those items in working memory. Rather, they are permanently available to you on the display. A chunk can be any meaningful unit that shares certain properties. Long-term memory (LTM) provides a mechanism for storing information and retrieving it at a later time. It's a relatively permanent storage system for maintaining knowledge. This brings us to a discussion about different kinds of knowledge. There are many different types of knowledge, and there are several different ways to categorize these types. This slide takes something of a functional look at knowledge and asks why we need certain knowledge types. Factual knowledge is a kind of mundane sort of knowledge. This may include facts you pick up from a pamphlet. It is information that is not processed very deeply and doesn't involve much in the way of genuine understanding. Declarative or conceptual knowledge reflects a deeper understanding of concepts. Procedural knowledge refers to how-to knowledge and is mostly closely associated with action or the acquisition of skills. Alerts often provide us with procedural knowledge of how to act in a given situation. Knowledge is often shared among members of a team, or in a workplace, or even among members of a culture. Cognitive constructs provide us with ways to talk and think about knowledge. Mental models are the most important construct in the context of HCI or human factors research, but it is helpful to have an understanding of some of the other concepts. Most people have an intuitive sense of the meaning of a schema or schemata. It is a construct that is well suited to capture the concepts people form about objects, events, and situations. They enable us to partition the world into things that are similar and those that are not. 
schemata enable us to make sense of our world and differentiate categories of things, such as neighborhoods, furniture, fruits, and movie genres. Knowing that you are going to see a romantic comedy or a horror film conveys a set of expectations about the plot, characters, and so forth. Schemata helps us make sense of incoming information. For example, there are properties of dogs that make them immediately differentiable from cats. The next slide conveys the property of schemata in terms of constants and variables. Imagine that you are a physician and a patient walks into your office complaining of chest pain. If you have sufficient experience and knowledge, you will be able to quickly differentiate a case of heartburn or muscle aches from a possible heart attack. In other words, we can select a schema based on the best fit and then continue to evaluate evidence and see if it is truly a best fit. You can express in a formal notation which indicate constants and variables. Although the two birds pictured on this slide could not look more different, we would have no trouble whatsoever recognizing them as birds. The same could be said for chairs, cars, food, banking websites, and pointing devices. They may not resemble each other on the surface, but they share common attributes that make them members of a schematic category. Our knowledge needs to be able to differentiate what makes these objects what they are and also what makes them unique. Scripts are a kind of schema that captures general information about routine events, such as a trip to the dentist or eating in a fancy restaurant. They provide us with a set of expectations regarding the typical roles of people involved and the event sequence. We also recognize when such expectations are violated. For example, if you were asked to pay for your meal before you ordered any food, then that would be a violation. If your dentist sits in the dental chair and expects you to do an oral examination on him, it would certainly violate your expectations. In this lecture, we examine the structure of memory, with a particular focus on working memory and considered cognitive constructs for mental representation, including schemata and scripts. In the next lecture, we will examine another form of cognitive construct, mental models. In addition, we will introduce the distributed cognition approach.